Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue to do these reviews, so thanks. And I have an extra fountain pen review this week. This one was unexpected and is time sensitive because the pen is part of a Kickstarter campaign that ends this coming Monday. I was contacted by a Shanghai, China handicraft design studio called Our Timber by email last week. I was told they liked my YouTube channel and would like to invite me to promote their new fountain pen product during their Kickstarter campaign. Of course, I responded that I would not do any promotions of products, but I certainly would give an honest review of a fountain pen if it was provided. There were a number of emails back and forth for clarification due to language differences, and it became clear that they were offering one of their pens to me for review only. So I said, sure, bring it on. And they sent me this brass and wood pocket fountain pen they call the Artimber Crown Minimal. It certainly is minimal. I must say that from the get-go, that I was quite dubious that this was a real thing at all and maybe just some internet scheme but the pen arrived in just a few days by UPS and it came by an interesting UPS route too check this one out the pen goes from Shanghai to Incheon to Anchorage Alaska to Louisville Kentucky and then to Sioux Falls South Dakota to Calgary talk about package tours or at least touring packages and the people at our timber were very thorough and resourceful too they couldn't ship the included pack of cartridges from china for international regulations of some sort so they purchased a pack of six cartridges from the canadian online pen seller stilo in montreal and had them shipped to me and they arrived on the same day as the pen too so let's see whether this little brass pocket pen and piece of fascinating chinese culture is worth getting on the kickstarter campaign right now and what i'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as i will talk about what i like and what i don't like so much about this fountain pen I already took it out of its UPS packaging and I was unsure whether I was getting a tiny pen at all really as the package was huge that was because they provided me with a shopping bag uh, to go along with it with their logo on it there's our timber and foil stamp and this nice little gift bag I suppose if I wanted to shop our timber I'd just send the bag back by UPS via Alaska with a list of stuff I wanted in the bag and they'd send it back to me that could be but the pen came in this lovely red and green box with uh, gold foil embossing and this lovely pattern the bottom has some Chinese writing on it and the translation includes the name of the pen which is uh, I'll try to pronounce this Huagian Huag Huagian Wag, you, I can't pronounce that. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy a hamburger. I would like to buy the burger. Small fountain pen, royal blue. And inside, there is a small square card with Chinese writing and a gold embossed uh, postcard with Chinese writing. I guess that's the right way up. and this brochure which talks about the our timber company and their various products and there's a website that says all of these things in english and gives you the opportunity to join the kickstarter campaign and i'll put that in the description then we have the pen and the ink cartridges this is the our timber crown minimal brass pocket fountain pen now i'll be doing some size comparisons later but just to get a sense of scale here let's put the crown minimal up against a caveco sport 
um, just to get an idea of size there. And here it is with the uh, Pen BBS 471 pocket pen and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you get an idea of scale as we go along. So this is a tiny pen, hence the name Minimal. It is relatively heavy at almost 30 grams, given its size, that's uh, pretty hefty. But that's because it's mostly made of brass. The wood portion of the barrel is stained mahogany. The pen comes in four colors, red, green, blue, and black. And from the website, I understand the black one is ebony, not mahogany. Overall, the pen is shaped and ornamented with designs representing the Forbidden City in China. The Forbidden City is a palace complex in the center of Beijing, uh, which was built in the early to mid 1400s, and it's now a museum. The Our Timber website says, the Forbidden City is the largest and most complete group of ancient architectural structures in China. Our crown minimal fountain pen is inspired by the classic design of the top part of the architecture of the Forbidden City. And here we see the top brass finial of which they spoke, which has the same design as one of the central buildings of the palace. There's a video on the Artimber website showing craftsmen hand finishing these brass pieces. Below the finial, the rest of the brass cap is adorned with an etched cloud pattern above and waves, kind of a water waves pattern below. The translation of some of the documents tells me this symbolizes wisdom and light, which gives a, quote, infinite sense of nature to writing. This etching looks like some kind of acid washing process. The cap ends right here where the barrel begins with brass for about three millimeters. And then we have the wooden barrel. Now I've had a few Chinese fountain pens with parts made of wood, and most of them are unimpressive. I'm a guy who loves his wood. Neither of you fellas have wood. <laughs> but only really impressive wood. Now, I have sheep. I need wood. <laughs> like in my guitars. Mahogany, ebony, rosewood, maple. Good, strong, beautiful woods that hold their shape and make a great finish. Come on. I just want wood. <laughs> Why are you making it so hard? <laughs> This barrel is impressive. I'm told it's mahogany, uh, what they call rainbow wood. Mahogany has large pores and that are very open and those pores need to be filled before the wood can be properly finished. The stain is very impressive here as well. This deep rich blue brings out the grain of the wood and when I unboxed it, I was on the front porch in the sunshine and I thought it was acrylic for a moment because it seemed to be very chatoyant. Uh, that's not chatoyancy, that's uh, uh, that depth of that grain. I actually thought they'd sent me the wrong pen. That's just how lustrous this finish is. It's very, very smoothly polished. And there are some Chinese characters deeply engraved into the barrel. Yang tells me that those characters say, Forbidden City Stationary. He also told me that this was the only one that will have these characters, as the Kickstarter pens will not have this feature. There will be an option to have your name engraved here instead. Just below the characters uh, is a copper, what uh, Yang calls a nail, uh, which is a decorative roll stop, and it has the Chinese character Gong, which means palace, uh, etched onto it right there. Then there is a flat-bottomed uh, end finial, which has the threads on it, which allows the uh, posting of the cap. The cap unscrews with one, two and a half turns to reveal a short brass section and a number five size steel Schmidt fine nib and a black plastic feed. The section is too short for me to hold onto the section itself, and the edges of the brass and those threads are a little sharp. Uh, but holding the pen back on the barrel uh, is very comfortable. Uh, let's screw that cap onto the 
N because it really can't be written with in any other fashion. But you hold it back here, and that is a good size uh, section. It's actually the barrel, but it's a good size uh, for writing with. And if you write close to your nib, um, it's going to be uncomfortable. But if you grip it back here, it's actually uh, not too bad at all. So this pen was not designed to be written with uh, if it was unposted. I fully expected not to be able to write with this, but the weight and the balance are actually quite nice. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It's a stock number no. 5 Schmidt steel nib, and it is in a nib assembly that unscrews very easily for replacement or cleaning. It has the typical ornate Schmidt scroll work and an F inside a scrolly box right there uh, that indicates it's a fine and there is no breather hole. The section unscrews to reveal a standard international cartridge. Although a Caveco uh, converter will fit into this section, the barrel won't accommodate it. And inside the cap shows no cap seal at all, just uh, milled brass. And kudos to our timber for making those uh, threads start with only one location so that that uh, section and nib line up with that roll stop every time. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Artimber Crown Minimal Brass Pocket Pen with a Pen BBS 471, a Caveco Sport, a Pilot E95S, and a Pilot Metropolitan. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Yes, the Crown Minimal is certainly the minimal of this group. Now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the R Timber Crown. Minimal, and it has a number five size steel, steel fine nib. Let's check the wetness. This is a decently wet pen for a very fine nib, and the nib is very smooth and it produces a nice thin line as expected. I've not had great luck with Schmidt nibs and I've made the odd joke now and then about them being pieces of doodle but this one's very nice and smooth indeed and the ink today is Robert Oster Soda pop blue. Here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. It's a lovely shading teal color. And as to line variation, well, you're not going to get much. Get a little bit out of there, but it's a very stiff steel nib as to be expected. The line this nib makes is 0.4 millimeters in thickness, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine. And for our quote.
and for some reverse writing. Yeah, it runs out pretty quickly. And some quick writing. See, it's uh, having a little bit of difficulty keeping up. And so, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? First, a big thank you to Yang of Our Timber for providing this pen for review. I'm not a big fan of tiny pens or brass pens, but I'm quite taken with this one. The craftsmanship is superb. The brass turning and the coloring and the finishing of the wood is extremely well done. The nib surprised me as I haven't had a Schmidt nib yet that hasn't been a disappointment, and I'm not very fond of very fine nibs, but this nib is very smooth for a fine nib. I was surprised at how the pen feels in the hand uh, because a heavy piece of brass that is very short with a tiny section isn't something that I'm going to expect to like. Uh, so I approached this pen uh, with a little bit of anxiety, wondering how I was going to say nice things about a pen that I wasn't going to like from the beginning. However, the pen made it easy. As soon as you post it and write with it, you know it's well balanced and actually feels good. I wouldn't write with this pen for long periods of time, uh, and it would be great if there was a medium uh, nib option, but I'm very impressed with this little brass in pocket. In pocket. And I love the story design and the decoration of this pen uh, that tells of the forbidden city in Beijing. The style and the history, the etchings of the sky and water, and the mixture of materials from brass uh, to copper to wood. I think this is a beautiful piece for collectors of interesting and unusual fountain pens. The Kickstarter for this pen continues until Monday. July 12th, so there's plenty of time to get on board if you're interested. I'll put the link to the Kickstarter page in the description. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching, and that's all she wrote. I made this.